Iceberg. Zuckerberg. Which one is a lettuce? You may find out, and I don't know about that, with Jim Jeffries. Show's about to start now. 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 Mark. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. I'm Jim Jeffries from the I Don't Know About That podcast, the Jim Jeffries show, the TV show Legit, and several home videos at my own house. (laughs) I'm here with Jack, Louise, Kelly, Forrest. We've all come together. How was your Christmas? Did you have a good Christmas? Yeah, it was great. New Year's. How was your New Year's? What did you do on New Year's, Forrest? New Year's just happened (laughs) four days ago. Um, I invented a vaccine that was more faster and more powerful and more accurate than the Pfizer one. Wow. Is it? Um, I'm not telling you, I'm not letting you steal my recipe. What are you going to do with it? It involves chicken soup. <laughs> For the soul. That's nice. Yeah, wow. and there's another secret ingredient, salt. No. Yeah, like, like Veruca salt, the person who did the polio vaccine. Oh. Uh, what do you got for us today, Jack? Comment world. Comment world, all the rides are horrible. (laughs) (laughs) Everything just ends in low self esteem. Give me a fucking break. (laughs) I wrote that. Yeah, yeah. part of it. Me too. I wrote that. I thought you guys just started talking in the middle of the song, to be honest with you. (laughs) I'm suing that person for sampling my voice. (laughs) Where's our money? (laughs) Give us our money. That was made by uh, Chad Campsey. Chad Campsey? Chad Campsey. I always think about names. Would you let your son marry a Chad Campsey? A Chad? Chad Campsey. There was, uh, what's his name? Uh, Jack Nicholas, the golfer. His, yeah. his, his son-in-law's name is Todger. He just, he goes, <laughs> Todger? Yeah. Welcome to the family, Todger. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, but the last yeah. name was rough too. It was all bad. Yeah. yeah his middle name's Roger. <laughs> <laughs> Todger Roger. And his last Todger name was... Roger Nicholson. <laughs> Uh, this first comment is a... When he's old, people will claim an old Todger. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> this first comment is somewhat of a compliment. Uh, somewhat is... of a compliment. Well, you'll see why. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's on the Hanukkah episode. They go, great subject choice. Um, uh, also, don't do the big opinionated discussions like the environment. I'm not watching for your uh, in-depth discussions. Also, Jack, you're in parentheses, slowly getting better by the episode. Mm. I actually actually yeah. added um, some to the end of that comment. <laughs> the The original sentence was, and Jack, you are slow. And then I put L-Y <laughs> to the episode. Yeah, Jack, if you can get his name and number, and then he can just give us all the things he wants us to do. And yeah, yeah. Wait, week, he doesn't we'll want to talk about right real yeah. shit. Yeah. You do. Here's, here's an idea for you, bucko. Just listen to the ones you want. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Problem yeah. solved. <laughs> YouTube gave me prompts. Uh, YouTube every once in a while gives me a prompts of how to respond to some comments and the ones for this one was fair enough <laughs> noted like what <laughs> what do you mean they give you prompts what are you talking about like, you know how so, you like, can respond to it and like it happens in you, email now too oh they it's give you like, suggestions it's like of how when your text respond. message goes sorry f- call you back in five minutes yeah, or whatever. yeah. yeah. okay so all of those were bad suggestions thank you YouTube um, a suggestion we did get was can you guys make a compilation of all the dinner party facts from the year no. no, it's not a bad thing. We can make a clip with Luis. all the different, with all the different dinner party facts. Yeah, Louise, there's uh, your Christmas bonus to us. But but <laughs> but check and see if that last guy is okay with that first. Yeah, I want to yeah, make sure. Yeah, okay, I want to yeah, make sure. I don't know his name. Um, I like how it's Louise's bonus to us. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a bit of a long one. I'm reading the comments as they come in while watching the podcast. Wow, Jim, there's some loopy motherfuckers sprouting, sprouting some crazy shit here. The first dozen dozen commenters shouldn't have, couldn't have finished the episode since it hasn't even been up long enough to watch the whole thing. Anyway, loves the podcast. Jim's so quick witted. Forrest and Jim bounce off each other so well, and Kelly keeps it all tied together so well. It's, it's just also- that me and Forrest are getting so big, it's hard for us to fit in the same room. <laughs> yeah. You two bounce off each other. Oh, we're in a closet. <laughs> it's also awesome how the production crew, Jack, and the Mexican dude, Manuel slash Rodrigo, oh, no. whatever, add a nice amount of variety and spice, in parentheses, probably chili and salsa. <laughs> Jesus Keep Christ. up the oh, wow. great work. So I, I love, how, I love how that person thinks spice is salsa. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> someone, someone had too much salsa to this. Because <laughs> I guess in the episode, you did ask people to guess what Luis's name is. Yeah, no, no, I understand what's happening. So they, the, Luis's name is Jose Juan Carlos Domingo Smith. 
That's one suggestion. <laughs> Luis is laughing, to be fair. I think Luis Yeah, because he's is... thinking about the lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> he's fucking these white people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this person spelled Luis, Luis's L-U-I-Z-E-Z-E-S-E-S, and they think your name is Jeff. Yeah, uh, Luis, what did I call the uh, the Mexican white beverage, the milky Mu- beverage? Muchacha. 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 And what's it called again? Horchata. Horchata. Yeah, I've been calling it muchacha, which I found out means woman. <laughs> <laughs> I've been asking it at the counter. And then For a large like, woman. Yeah. Here. I'll have, a la- I'll have a large muchacha, please. <laughs> uh, speaking of spice, one commenter says, to the haters... Forest is the spicy, tangy mustard that would be missed from my delicious sandwich that is the Jim Jeffries Motley Crew. All right, let's go around the room and say what condiment we think each other is. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, forest is like a mustard. Yeah. Spicy mustard? Not a spicy mustard. Mm. Just, just a one tangy of, one. Just one of the, like, why are you, one why of is the there so much here? In one of those <laughs> yellow bottles that tip at the top and then come down like that. I like all mustards. I know. So you are, you're, you're a mustard guy. Yeah. I feel like I'm a horseradish. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm like super white, tangy, and, and I'm like, uh, I'm like a bit like when you eat me, you go. It's not, an acquired not taste. For yeah. 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 Not go, for and everyone. And then you go, eh, it's all right, that. Yeah, yeah. Tw- <laughs> Twenty years in, you're like, yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you you buy it, you tell everyone you love it, and it sits on the shelf for about six months, and you only use about a third of a jar. <laughs> all right, what's Kelly? Oh, Kelly, Kelly would be a, a, a. You see, she'd be a more effeminate mustard, or a, or a, you like some mayonnaise? No, because you can't too... say effeminate mustard. We're doing <laughs> condiments. <laughs> Dijon is an effeminate mustard. Oh yeah, your is Dijon. It? Is when it? you think of, if you go, oh, a couple of Dijons walked in the room, you wouldn't be like, oh, that'll be some hairy men. No, it's all French. I don't know it's... what I would think if that was ever said. <laughs> <laughs> a couple, I would think Frenchmen. I guess. Yeah, well, that guy's look, fucking look, high. Look, my opinion. It's not just my opinion. If you want to throw in a condiment be my fucking guest i'm saying regular store-bought mustard <laughs> yeah. fancy Ooh, dijon fancy mustard and uh, then and then jack is some hillbilly fucking condiment <laughs> that like from atlanta from the he's, set. he's barbecue sauce yeah you know, you know you know you know yeah he's either barbecue sauce or he's that gunk that goes around grits Butter? What's that? Yeah, butter. <laughs> Lard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah your, your melted no, butter. How about mayonnaise? Because it's just. Yeah, but mayonnaise is a little bit boring. And, yeah. And I love mayonnaise. I well, love no, mayonnaise. No, but too. I, mayonnaise works with everything. Jack works with very little. <laughs> no, no, no. Jack, you, you, he can get along with everything. and then He can be an aioli. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. It, it's very plain. I'm yeah. like fancy mayo. No, you're not fancy. No, you're, you're very fancy. plain. Yeah, and yeah, a chipotle mayonnaise. What's the condiment that's crying right now? Because <laughs> that's Jack. some onion sauce or something. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's French onion dip. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> onion Not salt. even a sauce. I'm just a dip. <laughs> yeah, dips. Oh no! Look, don't get me on dips and sauce. They're the same thing. <laughs> you add a chunk to something and you go, "Ooh, it's Honestly, a sauce." That was a big, long-running discussion at Jeffrey Show. Was sauces, dips. What was it? Frostings. Uh, Condiments. I don't know why you're looking at me. This is happening in the office across from you all the oh, time. With... When you came in my office, I didn't listen. Mm. Oh, I, I think oh. we all know what Louise is. What? what? You say it. Chimichurri. Chimichurri? No, nah, because yeah. salsa is the obvious one. Right. Tapatio. We're just going by race. <laughs> Tapatio? I, I'm, a big, just... I'm a big fan of Tabasco. Only three ingredients, man. No, nah, but that's not... Ma- and not... They haven't changed that recipe Tabasco forever. is from Louisiana. Yeah, but it's fucking good, man. Okay, I put well, Tabasco on everything. I was trying to ethnotize. I it. like that truff sauce. I like that truff sauce that so has the has the uh, truffles in it. The little truff sauce. Well, Luis's childhood nickname was guacamole, which is why in, really in my phone. Well, it, it's what the white kids <laughs> named him at his school. <laughs> oh, oh, right, in my no. phone, his name is Mole. <laughs> did they re- did they really call you guacamole? Yeah, got uh, a bad case of gangrene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mentioned I was from Guatemala, and then oh, someone well, we see said, what happened. Wait, there. you're, uh, you're not from Guatemala, are my, you? My grandma's. I have okay. one grandma. So I was like, so you lied. <laughs> I was called by some of the meaner kids at school. It's called Casper because I was so mm-hmm. pale. It was oh, yeah. a popular one. And then I got really bad. I got third degree burns from the sun once. Like I was blistered. My whole face blistered. I got drunk and fell asleep at like 15 on a beach. And um, and then some of the kids would call me Bernie. Oh. Oh, like weekend at Bernie's? Yeah, because I burnt, you <laughs> see, Bernie. Yeah, yeah. And you're on the beach. Yeah. yeah, and I was dead, and people used to drag me <laughs> along behind a speedboat. <laughs> I tried to watch Weekend at Bernie's with my son, thinking, oh, this will be a fun lark. It was free on Amazon Prime, and I went, oh, you're a dead body being dragged around. This is this is going to be Hank's jam. Jeez, it takes a long time before they start dragging the body <laughs> yeah, around. And, and, and the lead character is is chain smoking in the fucking thing. Uh. Just a lot of cigarettes. <laughs> 
<laughs> you're not watching very good movies. <laughs> we, we watch a lot of movies in COVID. Yeah, 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 we're, yeah. we're on like three movies a day. Give me sure. a fucking break here. <laughs> I'm like going through, have we seen this? Have we seen this? Weekend at Bernie's. Ah, oh, yeah, this will be a good one. All right, we ain't got no, no right. uh, You misnamed the menorah and called it the Menorca, which we talked about. And then I believe in the episode, you joked that it's an island off of Spain. There actually is an island off of Spain called Menorca. Mallorca. Mallorca. No, there's Mallorca and there's Menorca. Okay, well, I was right. So you're right. That's what they're saying. They're giving you credit. You're right. Yeah, all right. Good on you, muchacho. <laughs> uh, last one. Someone also had coins and pudding, but they're from Russia. And they said, uh, my grandma cooked us manti for do, Christmas. Do the voice. My Grandma Kutus Manti for Christmas. No, you got to go down like this. <laughs> and then you got to scoop up at the end. <laughs> in the end. And then go, and then go, my grandma, she from the homeland, she put coin in the pudding. Do you, that. You Do guys it. are, you're basing your Russian accents off the GoldenEye video game? Uh, no, <laughs> uh, I'm I doing, I, you. I was doing Balki Bartokamus from, <laughs> from Perfect Strangers. <laughs> great show, great show. Do you remember when they could pitch sitcoms like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He comes from, we'll make a country up yeah and we'll give him a wacky dance <laughs> like an offensive happy dance they have to do the opening credits credits will basically be the f opening scene from the borat movies he's on the back of a wagon <laughs> he's on the back of a wagon with a donkey pulling it and he's standing tall and he's like Bye, everybody i'm off to america <laughs> and then it's like him running in fucking in uh that, that what's that the, the the german uh pants Fucking, you know, the ones. Yeah, yeah. Lederhausen. Yeah. Yeah. Him running in Lederhausen <laughs> to a Cubs game like, Cubs, number oh, one! <laughs> it sounds like Borat. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. It was happy Borat. Oh, yeah. You guys are probably too young for Perfect Strangers, right? You no idea what this Whoa. is. Oh, well, oh, well that, great show. That brings me to, we will not, we will be starting a, a, a Perfect Strangers podcast <laughs> where we'll be going over. Actually, I, I must plug this. Me, DJ, and uh, Dan back at all. We had to stop because someone had been exposed to someone with COVID. We were going to start it. We'll be recording a legit podcast to the to the ten fans of legit, and you know, I, we're going to be doing it episode by episode. There'll just be twenty six episodes, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to do it here in the studio, and we're going to sit and watch it on the TV, and then we're going to do the episodes right afterwards. I feel like it may deteriorate into the three of us arguing with each other because, <laughs> like, we have to sit there and watch each other and then talk about each other's performances. So that'll be interesting. No, people that liked legit are going to love that. And speaking of promoting stuff, we never have done it in a while. ID Cat podcast on Instagram. Mm -hmm. There's there's more people listening to this podcast than following us on there. Maybe you're not on Instagram, but if you are, go to IDK. Yeah, you get special podcast. you get special clips on the ID Cat uh Instagram. And I put the occasional clip on my site, but not many. I got told off by my management for doing it too much. They're like, no one cares. Promote your gigs. And I'm like, oh, all right. Gigs? No, exactly. I don't, <laughs> no one said anything. <laughs> <laughs> I could see you were. I could see the way your eyes were moving. That you were like lying. You were like just drifting off. You're like, yeah, the man. No, no, that's. I'll, t I'll tell you what my manager's been saying to me lately. Nothing. I haven't spoken to him about ten months. <laughs> There's been no career to speak of. I, this is the first year I don't know whether whether I, I the podcast already come out. I don't know whether I'm getting a Christmas gift. Every year you get a Christmas gift from your management and your agents. There's normally a gift voucher, or yeah. they send you a bottle of wine or something like that. It normally comes by now, yeah. and I feel like not working enough. <laughs> No gift. Uh, yeah. Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, back to Russia. Uh, the grand, the manti is basically oversized steamed cooked dumplings, and apparently in some she'd put she'd put coins in some. Do the voice. Some had sugar and some had salt. If you get the one with money, think a voice. It means you might get rich coming year. Less phlegm. <laughs> yeah, <but> sugar. <laughs> Sugar was standing for happiness, and if you pick one with salt, you go to gulag. Ah. Wow. Yeah. I love gulag with a bit of rice. Lovely dish. <laughs> now let's introduce our guest, Ian Wallace. Welcome to the show, Ian. Hello, Ian. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. All right. Now it's time for... Yes, no. Yes, no. Yes, no. Yes, no. Judging a book by its cover. I believe we have a theme song for that. Ah, oh, fuck it up. No, that was oh, we were so good. It was, <laughs> so, seamless. It was so seamless. It was so seamless how we did it. That's the best one we've ever done. Uh, so this is okay, he's going to guess what, you, what you're here to talk about, Ian. He's going to ask you some yes or no questions, and Kelly and I might give him some hints, but we'll see. Okay, well, Ian's, uh, from his voice, very clearly Scottish. Uh, his name's also Wallace. I'm going to say that he's an expert in William Wallace. 
Yeah, well, that's a guess. Yeah, you're wrong. Well, you're, wrong. you're wrong. Okay, well, not, so, a, not a bad guess yeah. though. That was a good educated guess. It was pretty bad. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, William, uh, Ian, not William, William Wallace. Freedom. <laughs> Ian, uh, do you work in entertainment? Do I work in entertainment? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I suppose I do. Yeah, I, I did it because you got two gu guitars behind you and nothing else. It looks like you're a very focused man, and it, <laughs> and that focus may be on guitars. Mm. Uh, I'm gonna give you a hint: it's not guitars or music, not white walls. Well, then no. I'm <laughs> fuck, fuck out of luck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, do you work? Do, do you work in comedy? No. No. All right. All right. You want Do you work in television? Sometimes. Are you a documentarian? No. Ah, that sucks. I, 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 I watch documentaries, you see. He's an expert in something you probably do often. Yep. Mm. Yeah, for sure. It's not masturbation. That's no, not masturbation. No, you, de you definitely do this often. It's, you have to do this often. It's not porn. I've seen Scottish porn. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's nothing to be written home about. <laughs> <laughs> the specific Scottish porn. Yeah, I, no, no. Well, all British porn is no good. Yeah. There's very, a lot of regional accents in there. <laughs> um, uh, Scottish porn, you have to take off about 15 layers. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's where all the excitement is. And then when you get everyone naked, then it's all over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fuck me a wee bit more. <laughs> um, uh, all right. Uh, not, it's, not, what, it's not masturbation. It's not porn. Is it involve food? No, it doesn't involve food. And I do it often. Every single day you do this. Walking. I walk every day, almost, no. almost. <laughs> Some, no. days. Some of those depressed days you stay in you, bed. Sometimes you might not even be aware that you do this. Blinking. No. Right. Expert in blinking, yes. That's what we got on the show. <laughs> <laughs> so many questions asked. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Uh, I, 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 does, does, okay. Does your expertise involve uh, movement of the human body? Uh, one particular part of the human body and I'll just give you a wee hint here, Jim. Yeah. Sometimes you ask, have you written a book? So here's a clue of one of the books I have written. Oh. Ah, uh, uh, giving it really away. Oh, there you go. Holding up a book and it looks like, is that Gibberish. Chinese? Is, it, is that Chinese right <laughs> Yeah. Squiggles. So that, was, that was Korean. Here's oh, Korean. A Chinese one. Oh, oh okay. So I'm going to say North, North, think about North Korea. <laughs> yeah, every day. <laughs> okay. You, 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 okay, there you go. Give him, a, give him another one. Give him another Snow. one. Snow. Wait. Uh -huh. Oh, oh, okay. I see the guy falling. Getting closer. Yeah, he's skydiving. Fall he's falling now. You do this every day, Jim. <laughs> he goes skydiving every day. Give him another one. Give him another book. <laughs> ah, still another language. Okay, nighttime. Wow. Uh, falling in the nighttime. Modern surprise. Falling in the nighttime. This guy writes a lot of sleeping. Books, right? Sleep. Suenos. I, that's in Spanish. We're I, closer. I means that. It, okay, it means that that his book's been printed in many different languages. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so, I've got that. Yeah, Nighttime uh, Ian, Ian falling. Has, Ian has sleeping. just held up about seven different books in different languages. Yeah, it's a hundred ways to talk. Yeah. Okay. Here, give him one in English. Here, Ian. Let's hold hold a book up. There you go. Oh, your dream. uh, dreams. <laughs> I don't dream every. I'm. Well, I'm, we'll find out if you do or not. But you might not remember it. I heard once that you have. Like you should only have a nightmare about once a month or something like that. I'm on like three a week. Okay, <laughs> I well, wake up in cold sweats with nightmares. All I thought everyone was doing that, and then someone like I, I, an ex girlfriend or something said to me, he went, "No, no, no, you're not meant to have nightmares every well, day." We'll see. And I'm like, ah. Oh. So dreams. Ian Wallace is here to talk about dreams. Ian Wallace is regarded as a global authority on the practical application of our nighttime dreams as a positive and healthy method to help us achieve our waking life dreams and ambitions. He is a qualified psychologist and has analyzed over 350,000 dreams for his clients. Ian is the best-selling author of The Top 100 Dreams, The Dreams That We All Have and What They Really Mean, and The Complete A to Z Dictionary of Dreams, Be Your Own Dream Expert. He regularly, appear, uh, regularly whatever that word is, uh, that I can't say, uh, you know what I'm talking about, appears on television and radio around the world, helping dreamers to understand their dreams so they can turn them into positive action. Ian is also a multi-award winning corporate psychologist and director of psychology at the Litha Group, where he and his team are creating the technology to provide mental health support for everyone on planet Earth for free. You can find out more about his work with dreams at ianwallacedreams.com. I-A-N-W-A-L-L-A-C-E dreams.com. All right. Yeah. Thanks for being here. Um, Thank you. Uh yeah, so what got you into dream? Like, how did you get to this po this point in your life? Like, where you're an expert in dreams or written books on dreams? Just always been fascinated by dreams ever since I was tiny. My first memory was a dream, 
And I kept bugging my parents about dreams, what they were. And everyone I spoke to, I kept asking them about dreams. So I went to university, Edinburgh University, and studied psychology. And I do quite a lot of other types of psychology, but dreams are, is the psychology I always come back to and I'm best known for. When you said your first memory is a dream, wouldn't it be correct to say your first memory was having a dream? Because isn't a dream not a memory? Does that make you sense? <laughs> That's, that's a very good question, Jim. So I can see why you're participating in this show. Yeah, he, he, he's trying to get an answer before he, he ace that stuff too. That's what he's doing. So uh, it's, a, it's a very good question. So uh, because we're talking about memory, Jim, remember that question. Come, okay. come back. All right. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm smart, fella. All right. Let's see. Uh, we're going to ask Jim everything he thinks he knows about dreams. I'm um, going to ask give him some questions too, to help him along. And and then you're going to grade him, Ian, zero through 10, 10 being the best on his accuracy of his knowledge of dreams. Kelly's going to grade him on confidence. I'm going to grade him on et cetera. Uh, zero through 10, your waking nightmare. 11 through 20, wet dream. It's not mm-hmm. bad. Yeah. 21 through 30. I only had one. I only had one of them. 21 through 30, your dream boat. Oh, Ooh. they don't say it anymore. They should bring that back. Yeah. yeah. He's a dream boat. Who's they? Isn't he? They're 1950s people. <laughs> <laughs> they no, might still be saying it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What are dreams, Jim? Well, see, that's a very, I won't say loaded question, but it's a very difficult question to answer because there's, there's several types of dreams. There's the dreams you have while sleeping. That's where what we're talking about. But then there's also the I I have a dream. No, no, we're not talking about we're not talking about civil rights, <laughs> and we're not speeches. talking about aspirations. We're aspirational no, no. dreams as well. We're talking about sleeping, just sleeping dreams. Sleep yeah, in your oh, brain. that's just your brain going on a trip while you're having a sleep, man. Yeah, okay. <laughs> or while you're on drugs, or or why you or or you just we including daydreaming. Sure. Yeah, and then it's just where you let your mind wander. Mind wander. Yeah. Okay. Why do we have dreams? Ah. Uh, you know, a bit of entertainment in it. Life's pretty dull. So it's <laughs> Netflix. Like, it's like Netflix. Yeah. Right? So it's like it's like before the telly, right? I'm sure dreams have dropped since the telly's been invented. Uh-huh. Right before the telly, you used to just sort of make your own things up, and it's also like I can't fly, but in my dreams I can. Mm-hmm. You know, bit of fun. Bit of fun. Except for nightmares, quite the opposite. <laughs> are, are nightmares still considered dreams? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, nightmares no fun. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes they're there to. I think nightmares and uh, for the and dreams, for some in some level of your subconscious, are there to guide and warn you a little bit about um, not things that might happen, but if you're you're acting a certain way in your life, these things could happen. It's a sort of premonitiony mm-hmm. type thing, but they're not actual premonitions as such. That'd be ridiculous. Yeah. Does everyone dream? Um, I would believe the vast, vast majority of human beings. I think like, every everybody dreams. Zero to hundred percent. Everybody dreams. Everyone dreams. Yep, hundred percent. Hundred percent of people dreams, but not everyone remembers their dreams. Okay, what I'm gonna. I, I remember less dreams now than I used to. Do animals dream too? Oh yeah, yeah. My, my my cats definitely dream. You've seen dogs when they start smiling and they're sleeping and they start whacking their foot up and down. <laughs> okay. You can't prove it. I don't know. I don't know if all animals do. Uh, <clears throat> Cockroaches? Yeah, why not? They're okay. like, oh, yeah. Well, imagine going out in the day and just wondering. <laughs> that would be something. <laughs> Go to their cockroach friends. Oh, I had a dream the other day. I got into that cereal box. But it hasn't even been opened. Yeah, it wasn't me dream. <laughs> <laughs> what percentages of dreams do we remember? Uh, oh, I would I would say a very small percent. I'd say 5%. Okay. I read something, and I think you're right on that, but I'm not sure, Ian, until us. I think you just guessed right. How many stages of sleep are there, and can you name them? Um, there's dozy, where you're feeling a bit, oh, a bit yeah. sleep, sleepy, and then there's uh, rapid eye movement, REMs. Where that's when you get your deep sleep. Yeah. That's the good stuff. That's the stuff that make you, makes you feel vitalized in the morning. So there's only two stages? I'm going to say three. Dozy, cool. sleepy, and REM. Oh, sleepy is a stage? Yeah. It's- Dozy, <laughs> sleepy, and REM. Wait, if it's not, not a- happy and bashful. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, okay. Um, uh, what does REM stand for? Rapid eye movement. And what is, what is, how does it relate to dreams? Um, uh, because when you're doing that, you're dreaming. When your eyes are like shuddering along, going like that, you're going, uh, your brain's going into its own little, it, it, it's like, it's like uh, you've left a computer on and it's just starting to play games by itself without you controlling it. How many dreams do we have on an average night? Um, oh, I'm going to say three. Now, the reason I say this, do you ever have that dream, the really good dream, where you have a dream 
and you're enjoying it and then someone wakes you up mm. and then you go, I want to get back into that. And then you, you, you force yourself to go back to sleep and you go, where were those tits again? You know what I mean? <laughs> and so you, 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 you go back to it. Um, so what are nightmares? Why do we have nightmares? I think nightmares are there in a like a Darwinish type of way to keep you safe. See, I have a nightmare, and I spoke to my father about this. I've spoken to other parents about this, about not being able to save my son in dangerous mm -hmm. situations. And I've had that ever since he was a baby. It'll be something like he'll be on a cliff's edge and I'll go, no, 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 no. And then I'll go and I won't be able to grab him in time. Or he'll fall under ice and I can see him, but I can't. And they're very horrendous. And I thought this was just a thing that I had. And then my dad, I, saw, I told my dad about it. And he went, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they always just get close to your hand and then they <laughs> fall off the cliff, right? Um, and so so I think parents have that. And that's just to make sure you keep your child safe. They're, they're just there to reinforce uh, things. And also, I, I sometimes have nightmares about things that I feel guilty about in my life that that you know, I, I didn't do right by a person or something like that. And mm -hmm. I, I have a nightmare that that person's gonna be angry at me, an ex-girlfriend or this or that. Now do kids, do children have more nightmares than adults? Uh, I don't believe they do, but they do half harp on about them. Oh, <laughs> uh, I, my, my son goes, I have a nightmare. And he's, and he's like, oh, it was just, there was like people throwing rocks. And you're like, what the fuck? Okay, here, here's some other terms. Just give me some quick answers to them. Mm -hmm. Night terrors. <laughs> Uh, night terrors. Um, I, well, I, I, I had a, I had a quite a, I had quite a, um, and I, oh, this is, I'm getting back to this. Yeah. I had quite a bad, you know about this. I had a bad break in where, where, where some people came into my house in Manchester. I was living with a comedian called Steve Hughes and, and Whitehead lived there as well. He wasn't in the house at the time. And, um, a guy came into, one guy came in the house with a hammer and one guy came in the house with a machete and, and they held the knife to me throat, and a little cut on me head and it was tied up and all this type of stuff. And um, uh, ever since that moment, uh, you have to wake me up very gently mm. because if you give me a little thing, I'll start swinging. I'll go, Wah! like that, right? You can't, you have to be very distraught. You can't just shrug my shoulder. Mm -hmm. I'll lose my shit if you wake me up. But, uh, but that's like a night terrier thing or something? Well, like I think so because before then I never did that. That was never a thing. And now I, I, I wake up very So abruptly. a traumatic event or something? Yeah, a traumatic event or something okay. Something in your subconscious that uh, a traumatic event that sparks you, yeah. Do you know what dream or do you know what lucid dreams are? Uh, lucid dreams is where you can control the narrative of the dream. You can go, and I think I might fly now. And I, oh, am I having sex with a beautiful woman? Sit on my cock whilst I'm flying. <laughs> All your dreams are a lot of sex, right? Sex those, and those flying. Are the good, those are good sex and flying is your positive dreams. Sex, sex <laughs> everything and, else is night terrors. Yeah, everything, <laughs> everything else is night terrors. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, sex and flying. Uh, dream lag. Do you know what that is? Um, it's where you dream on a long haul flight. Okay. False awakenings. <laughs> uh false awakenings uh is where oh that's that's like when you think you're awake but you're not actually awake wake. like when you're pissing on your leg and you're like i've woken up and i've walked to the toilet now i'm standing over the toilet and then the warm starts going over your thigh and you go oh that's weird the water's meant to the piss is meant to be landing in the bowl why do i feel this warmness on my thigh and then you go oh no <laughs> I'm dreaming. And then you sit in a puddle of your own piss and do nothing and go back to sleep. <laughs> okay. Uh, i got about four or five more questions here. Sure. Uh, Ask why, away. Why sometimes do things wake you up from your dreams? You know, like you've ever been woken up? Like, and you're, why, do, why do you think you get woken up from a dream? Like before you... Um, why do you think you get woken up from Because the, the, the dream uh, start like it's always things like you're about to die or you're falling off the edge or something. You're about to hit the ground. You never, in my dreams anyway, I never experience my death because who knows what happens after you die, what the yeah. sensation is. I feel is. like I've experienced my death before, but I'm not sure. I'm, I feel like, like I've, have you had dreams where you die and then I, you go to heaven and then no, you No, 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 but I think I died. I don't know. Um, <laughs> what you do? You hover over your dreams. Do you see yourself? I always no, nah, no. Nah, I just think I was like, yeah, then I died. I always see uh, out. I always see outside my own eyes, and then often I see people throughout my life. Like you've been in several of my dreams, Forrest. Right. Jack's been in one. Yes, I remember that. and it's always like, but when like it's always topsy turvy shit. It's like, ah, oh, what Jack's my boss? What's going on? <laughs> And then the right. sex starts. All right. And then I wake up with night turns. And you're flying. Okay. Uh, no, that's not as good as a dream as I was hoping. <laughs> We're almost done here, Ian. I feel like Ian's just analyzing it the whole time. Too. Sure, uh, yeah, sure. So. This guy's a psycho. <laughs> nah, I think he's doing pretty good, actually, because I read a lot before this, but I don't know. I'm not the expert. Um, uh, why do we have recurring dreams? 
Uh, well, like anything in life, because some of them are because you may have enjoyed it and your brain's giving you a treat. Treat. And another thing is there might be a lesson that you have not learned yet, or there Punch. might there might be a, a, <laughs> a safety thing that they want to reinforce on it. Or it may be that you're boring. Some people dream in like black and white and shit like that. And then they reckon with languages, if you start dreaming in that language, then you really nail the language that, that you've like really taken it on board. Uh, I have. I am yet to dream in English. Rosetta Stone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all my dreams are like Charlie this. Brown. <laughs> fire, 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 fire. And, and Italian for some reason. You're really good at Italian. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, here's some dream common dream themes, mm -hmm. and. Tell me what this means, just real quick. Yeah. You're falling. Uh, you're falling, it means you're anxious about something in your life. Anxious. Being naked in public. Ah, I used to have this one all the time. This is my dream for naked in public. This is what I used to do. Is I used to get on the school bus. I was never like that walking around naked. I used to get on the school bus for school, and all the kids were saying, but they weren't, they weren't laughing or pointing. They were just staring like, oh, my fuck. And I'd be like... What's the problem? And I'll be like, I've got my backpack. I've got my shirt. I'm wearing me tie. There's me blazer. And I look down and be like, ah, forgot your fucking pants again. <laughs> <laughs> and I just have me dick hanging out underneath me shirt. And then my brain, because no one was laughing, I'd always go, maybe you could just play this off. And, I, and I'd walk very confidently onto the bus with me dick hanging out. And I'd sit down and go, okay, like that. That's my one. Why, why, why though? What's the, um, What's the meaning? Just the meaning. I, 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 I think the meaning would be uh, that you have a, a big exam or something coming up because I don't get that so much anymore. Big exam. All right, what about taking a test? That's another common one. I still get taking a test. Yeah. I still have taking a test. I haven't taken a test for years, but I do know that I had a taking the test um, one this week. Now, we, we pre-recorded this episode, and I know it's because it's the first... Uh, I'm about to perform properly for the first time mm. since yeah. February, and so my brain's like, are you ready? Are you ready? I think that's when you're preparing for something big in your life. What about losing teeth? This, this, yeah. Oh, I, that's, never, that's never happened to me, but this is a common one. Oh, no, no, I no, hate no, that, that one. Yeah, that's that, happened to you, Jack? Oh, that, yeah. That one's just like this. Like, you're eating a bit of food, and then you feel a bit of well, and you go, what? And then it just pull, comes so out. What's that about? really easy. Um, that's an anxiety one, I'm sure. Anxiety. Okay, and then flying. What's that? Why? Is, why do you want to fly? Because flying is cool. Okay, because it's that's cool. just to relax. To yeah, relax. Yeah. Okay. It's to get me there faster. <laughs> okay. Um. Here. Uh. Two more questions. Why are certain sensations muted in dreams? Like you know how like you can't you think you can't run fast or hitting mm. hit, like it's not real. Like it doesn't feel real, but you're doing it. Um, we used to answer your own question because it's not real for us. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> All right. And These the, things aren't the real world. Things oh. are a bit different in dreams. <laughs> Thank you. Do blind people have sight when they dream? Um, I believe they would, yes. I believe that blind people would have sight when they dream. Even if they were born blind? Even if they were born blind. Okay, in the, um, that's a tricky one. Um, because I believe that in their mind's eye, even when they think they have sight, you know, when they think of something, yeah. when they go someone into the room, they don't think clip, clop, clip, clop. Their friend is a horse. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> like, I, I, a, thorough, I, I, a thoroughbred walks into the room. Yeah, yeah. Feel, feel, my like, best friend's a Clydesdale. I feel like you have the same information on blind people that you do about your cat. <laughs> like yeah, you yeah. think they're doing it, but you're not sure. Yeah, so. I, I, th I think they probably see in their in their mind. Yeah, of course. Why wouldn't they? Bit of fun. All right, Ian. Thank you for waiting there patiently. Um, on a scale of zero to ten, ten's the best. How did Jim do on his accuracy of his knowledge of oh, the sorry, just burp, dreams? Burp, yeah, I would say you almost squeezed in to uh, above 10, but knowledge of dreams still in that waking nightmare. So I would say around about eight. Hey, eight. That, nice. that might be no, my... no, 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 no. no and... Ten, ten's the best. Zero to 10. So eight is, yeah. Right. So we're going to add up, we're going to add up three scores of 10 to get to the waking nightmare. And, uh, yeah. So. Right. It's okay yeah. with you now. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so on Jim, Jim's knowledge of dreams, I would say, so out of 10, I would go for. Four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh wow! I was about to say that's my highest score <laughs> ever. I mean, I think you did good, but no. and then fucking four. Yeah, yeah, that sounds right. But you were, but you were very confident, and you sounded like some of them sounded like smart answers. Not most of them, no, but some of them did. Um, so I'd give you a six. <laughs> well, I, okay. First of all, this is all open to interpretation, surely. Yeah. yeah. Also, well, kind of like dreams. There's no, yeah. Yeah, there's no trophies here either. So you're but not maybe, really maybe Ian's about to tell me that these things that he's about to say are factual, and he he has he, the research and the data to tell me why. Give so, him a good score for yeah, us. He really 
really wants to be called a dream boat. No, no I, you no, know what? He's only had one wet dream, so mm. I'm gonna give him one point. Ooh. So he gets eleven. I've had one. Sec- now you get your second I, wet dream. I believe I haven't had more <laughs> wet dreams in my life because I masturbate so much that I've never had an empty canister that needs to be emptied. <laughs> okay. I, be- I wake up with erections on the regular. I'll do the old joke. It's to stop me rolling out of bed. Before we even <laughs> um, before we even start, is that? A, do you know anything about wet dreams, Ian? Yes, I do. Yeah. So um, I think that happens when we dream, even though the dream doesn't have any sexual content, is that we become sexually aroused and all your naughty bits fill up with blood, whether you're a man or a woman. Mm. Oh. Do women have wet dreams? Mm-hmm. Do, you, do, you, do you wake up with a bit of a squirt there? Do you, do you... <laughs> yeah, it's squirting all the time. No, I, <laughs> I definitely have had an orgasm in my sleep, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm surprised I didn't wake you. <laughs> <laughs> Fired. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> We've gotten in a lot of trouble <laughs> in a different in a different scenario. There's been other occupations I've had where I would have gotten in a lot of trouble with a joke. Yeah, holy crap! Yeah. <laughs> this will be Luckily the last podcast. <laughs> this is the last. I don't know about that podcast. So. Uh, all right, Ian. So Jim, we asked him what dreams are. He said your brain's going on a trip while you're sleeping, let letting your mind wander. Yeah, so that's that's completely wrong, Jim. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so what dreams are, they're uh, an absolutely fundamental neurological function. Uh, and the main function of dreaming is to process emotions that you experience and absorb during the day. Only 2% of our awareness as human beings is actually conscious, and the other 98% is unconscious, and it's mainly emotion. So the way we process all that emotional information that we absorb during the day is through our dreams. And we have to remember that dreams are not just a flow of imagery. They're also a flow of emotions. They're a stream of emotions. And what we experience in the dream as an image is how we articulate emotions when we are sleeping. Oh, wow. so the fact that I have a lot of nightmares, that's, that means I'm a bad person or I just carry emotions too much or what's that? People make this false dichotomy between dreams and nightmares. They're just one continuum. So there's no real difference between them. All that happens in a nightmare is that it's more emotional. It's more emotionally intense. And very often in a nightmare, you're trying to get your own attention. People think that dreams happen to them, like you're just some sort of passive observer. They are tuning into some psychic ether but the reality is as was found out in the 1990s is we happen to the dream so you create everything that you experience in the dream so you create something you experience in the dream because you're trying to make sense of your emotional life and waking life and if you don't pay attention to that dream it will start to turn into a nightmare because you're turning up the emotion you're turning up the vividness the scariness because you're really trying to tell yourself something and what you're trying to tell yourself is that you have some amazingly powerful emotion about some situation in waking life, and you have an opportunity to channel those emotions and do something positive with them. Wow. Wow. So, yeah. My, my, many girlfriends that I've had, I've always shat on them, tell me about their dreams. So, basically, I'm just shitting on their emotions. So, yeah. that's yeah. why we've gotten into fights every time. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much. And you, you didn't pay attention to them and they turned into nightmares. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, 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 as soon as you were explaining what dreams are, I'm like, oh man, I'm an asshole. Yeah, you are like, an asshole. I was like, I shit on Kelly's dream right before yeah. this podcast. He walked in, I was like, exp- I was reading a dream that I'd written down. He's like, fuck off, nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So well, you're I an still, asshole. I still yeah. quite, so, so are they helpful to us, like to get these emotions out of us? Is that the thing? Is it, are they trying to are they trying to like uh, unload us from something? Yeah. So we're trying to process information that doesn't make sense to us during the day. Most of our emotions don't seem to make sense; they're irrational. So it's our way of processing those. And in our dreams, as I said, we don't. The dream doesn't happen to us. We happen to the dream and we create everything in it. And everything we create in the dream, the characters, the animals, the places, the events, the objects, everything is a reflection of our own selves, our own identities. So when you dream of different characters, you're using those characters to symbolize some aspects of yourself. So what we do in the dream, what the dream is doing is continually updating your sense of self, who you are, what you need and what you believe. So it's the ultimate self-portrait or the ultimate selfie. 
and that's what the dream does for you oh wow so if you if you dream awesome dreams are you an awesome person if you dream shitty things you're a shitty person well awesome people have shitty dreams and vice versa mm. so we all have a degree of awesomeness and shittiness <laughs> and what we try and do in, in the dream is to to balance that out because all that shitty stuff is really fertile as well it helps us to grow so we can use that as a kind of fertilizer a psychological fertilizer to grow and distill and what we do in the dream we're always doing that we're taking past experience and feeding it into future expectations to understand how we might become the person that we dream of becoming. I have I have a few, uh, as all, all people do, I have a few traumatic things from my childhood that I constantly dream about. And uh, they just, and they feel more like memories than dreams. W what does that mean? Often children have those sorts of experiences, Jim. I do a lot of work with children's dreams in child psychology. And one of the big challenges as a child, if you have traumatic experiences as a child you have very little power or choice in your life and and with that you're continually trying to process those emotions when you feel you didn't have power and and what we do with dreams so as you've so clearly pointed out Jim dreams aren't real but they are a way of describing something real so the stuff in waking life the real things like tables water computers microphones those are what's but what the dream does is articulates the why. Why do you need water? Why do you like using the microphone? Why do you have that table? So what we're doing with those, when you dream of something traumatic in your childhood, you, what you're saying to yourself is, I didn't have power and choice back in my childhood, but now as an adult, I do have power and choice and I can do something with it that I'd like to do. So you're using those dreams from your childhood to actually remind you how far you've progressed in your life's journey. Hmm. All right. Um, does everyone dream? Jim said, yes, 100% of people dream. He's not, doesn't think everyone remembers them. And he also thinks animals dream. Is he correct on that? Yeah. <clears throat> so everyone dreams. There are some people who may have some uh, brain injury or congenital brain conditions who don't have the neurological apparatus for dreaming. Uh, everyone dreams. Uh, not everyone remembers their dreams uh, because of the way memory consolidation works and some other issues like threshold effects. And animals certainly do dream. So obviously dogs dream, you watch a dog dreaming and it's running around, it's sniffing the air, it's chasing things. If you watch a cat dreaming, uh, a cat dreaming is usually stalking, you can see it creeping up on things, and it's tail twitching. And it would suggest, so I'm not saying it does, although I have been offered good money to move to California and be a pet dream analyst <laughs> are you shitting on california that right now so... uh, no it's just uh that's uh that's where the offer came from yeah but anyway Jackson, that, you can uh, just live at lisa vanderpump's house she has, I mean, she's got like 15 animals there yeah i think it checks out animal dream expert california yeah yeah so uh but, but in the, the dog and the cat you can see them hunting and the the most common dream that humans have is being chased yeah and, and we have uh, this word pursuit. So a pursuit is being chased, but it's also chasing something. But in waking life, it's some ambition you're trying to achieve. So for a dog, you know, it might be a visit to a sausage factory. For a cat, it might be eating their owner. But humans have lots of different ambitions. How, how, do, you, how do you, like, like is this just an assumption that these animals are dreaming? Or is there, have we dissected a brain? Or how do we know that animals are doing this? They are, uh, you can see them uh, having rapid eye movement. Yeah. And there have been some experiments where people have hooked them up to electroencephalographs and seen brain activity uh, that might be dreaming. So as far as we know, um, all mammals dream. Um, no cockroaches? Birds, uh, well, they may dream. You know, cockroaches may have dreams of cereal boxes. We just <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I think. I think we, we can't tell if a goldfish dreams. And if he does dream, it's just like, yeah. oh, it's imagining I was walking. It's mental. <laughs> 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 I had the walking dream again. Why is he British? 
Well, why not? Of course he's, he's yeah, British. He's, why can't he be British? He's in a British aquarium. Goldfish are American. Everybody knows that. Um, yeah. if, the, if the function of dreaming is to help us work through these emotions, then it doesn't seem fair that when we wake up, oftentimes we forget everything. So it, are we... Are we actually able to work through that emotion if we've forgotten the dream or is it something that it has to be a dream that we remember so we can actually remember the themes in it? As long as we can remember some of the imagery from the dream, Kelly, so we don't have to remember the whole narrative. Uh, the challenge with remembering the dream is a few of them. So the one of them, one of the fundamental ones is that another function of dreaming is that it helps consolidate short term memory into long term memory. So this is the dream lag thing that Forrest mentioned, that people often dream about events that maybe happened years ago, like in their childhood or last week. But what we do when we're updating our sense of self every night when we dream is we go back through all our past experiences and filter through them and then apply them to future expectations. There's also an effect called the threshold effect, and that's the effect that happens when you are moved from one space to another and your attention shifts. So it's like sometimes when you go into a room to get something and then when you go into the room, something else catches your attention and you forget what you went in there for mm -hmm. to start off with. What was that called again? Because you, you broke up. Oh, threshold effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you broke up a little at the beginning. All right. Threshold he, he, effect. Here's, a, here's a weird question. I, I don't know if there's an answer to this, but okay. So so we're dreaming about things from our childhood or something that happened last week or things that we've seen. and all stuff. So if a person was born, grew up in one room, never left that room, would they be able to dream of things outside of that space? Or can you only dream with things you have conceptually seen? You can mainly just dream of things that you have experienced. Now, because we're human beings, we have a collective experience uh, through our culture. So we know of generations and generations of past humans and all the things they've experienced and all the things that future humans hope to experience. But if you are in some sensory deprivation like that from from birth now, i don't know if anything has been done like that i hope not but it would really um close down your brain development so in i'll just ask the girl in the basement what she dreams of <laughs> 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 well what about blind, with that uh, last question because that kind of leads into that if you're bl born blind do they dream in sight or do there's a study has been done on that or no so um some of my clients, so I work with uh, a number of clients uh, who are in the public eye. Uh, and one of them is quite a, a well-known musician who's blind. And he doesn't uh, dream in sight, but he dreams in sound and touch. Oh, he's so very someone, superstitious as well. Yeah, he is very superstitious. <laughs> <laughs> very good. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> So, so no, I cut you off for that joke. Sound, Keep going. Is it sound, <laughs> sound and light, light. You said or touch. yeah, no, uh, sound and touch. Touch. Mm. Sound and touch. So the um, because our visual sense is is the most complex and rich one, that's the one we tend to to dream most in. But we also dream in touch and sound and smell and taste. If if someone is blind um, from birth, they, they they don't have anything really uh, visually. If someone has lost their sight at some point during their life, then they will still dream in imagery uh, up to the point where they lost their sight. And then that will start to fade away over a period of time. Yeah. So it comes back to this idea of continually updating the sense of self. You update that sense of self through your senses and what you've experienced and what you're trying to do with them. So if you're saying that a blind person uh, uh, dreams in smell and touch and, and sound, um, and I'm not, I'm not trying to make a Helen Keller joke here. Did she just dream in touch? <clears throat> would Helen, Helen Keller, because she was deaf and blind, yeah, so she, she would have just dreamed in touch? She would just have dreamed in touch. It depends how much of those sensory perceptions a person might have. So it's not just like a binary thing. It's like how much sight do they have? How well sighted are they? How well can they hear? And, and so on. So they will dream in the sense they have, because that's the only connection we have with the outside world. We all think, you know, as we're chatting, that we are all in the world, but all we have is the sensory connection to the outside world. And we form all our images of the outside world in our brains uh, in pretty well the same way we do with dreaming. 
So that's one of the reasons dreaming is so interesting psychologically. It's a kind of proto-consciousness that lets us see consciousness working. So she would have woken up after a good dream and just been like, <laughs> felt. Right? <laughs> and then like, like after a bad night, she would have gone, nail gun. Oh, God, it was a horrible sleep. She's greater. Oh, no, it was terrible. That's the nightmare. That was the old um, the, the Helen Keller said the cheese grater was the scariest book she ever read. That's, an, that old, a, that's, that's an old joke, an oh, old yeah. pub joke. Yeah. I thought that was reality. <laughs> um, I asked Jim what percentage of dreams do we remember. He said 5%. How many dreams do we have an average per night? He said three. And I didn't ask him how on average how long each dreams last so how, uh, how each, many, each dreams uh 30 minutes okay you go. so how, how, how many percentage of dreams do we remember how many do we have a night and how long do they last usually generally it, it depends how often or how habitually you work with your dreams forest so i work with dreams a lot and i can remember most of my dreams from a night oh. and we tend to so we sleep in 90 minute cycles these ultradian cycles that Ernest Hartman described in 1968. So these 90-minute cycles in those, so say we sleep for seven and a half, eight hours per night, we will have five sleep cycles. And in each of those sleep cycles, we will have one dream episode. At the start of the night and the end of the night, those are quite short. Um, but in the middle of the night, they're quite long. And they range in length from 10 minutes to 45 minutes. So on average, we dream for around two hours per night. We spend a twelfth of our life dreaming. Wow. wow. Okay. So it's right about a half an hour and five, three to four. Yeah. And so the stage is set, we're keep keeping in that theme. Stages of sleep. Jim said there's three: dozy, sleepy, and REM. <laughs> uh, REM. But I know he's right on one of those. <laughs> but <laughs> how many stages, or what like, are they? Yeah. That sounds like a great concert billing. Yeah. <laughs> well. Depends so if you the, like yeah, REM or not. The, the first two artists, the, the first two artists just show up and go, "Is the band broke up?" But I can still sing the song. I ho, <laughs> without the harmonies. I love those so, seven so part harmonies. Close with the first one. So the first one uh, is called Light Sleep, and dozy. The uh, so, yes, yeah, so the first one is called Light Sleep. Yeah, and then that's quite dozy. And you have this thing just as you're starting to drift off called um it's a uh, a state called hypnagogia where you get some little images coming back from maybe from during the day or just oh, yeah. flashes of things coming in it's like that korean and barbecue stuff it, sometimes i'm falling asleep <laughs> and i and i it, 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 it wakes me up because i i think of something and i don't even get your joke what you <laughs> the goji or something sorry <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, so what were you saying? Sometimes like I'll be, be about to fall asleep and something will just wake me up like an image. Will, like it's like images are running too fast. So I wake up like really quick. I don't know. Yeah. So those are called hypnagogic hallucinations. Oh, that's for what it. That is. Hypnagogic. There's also a thing, there's a physical thing called a hypnic jerk or a myclonic jerk. So when you go to sleep, you start to release all the tension from your muscles, from your body, particularly your large anti-gravity muscles like your back arms, legs, asshole. Torsion, <laughs> asshole. <laughs> if you've seen my asshole, it's not a, it was obeying gravity too much. <laughs> Every time okay. I sit in the, on the toilet bowl, it's like I have the gravitational pull of Jupiter. No, thanks. <laughs> Scientists are studying it. <laughs> Things are orbiting it. Yeah. I'm sure there's an, an event horizon around the toilet bowl. <laughs> Anyway, you're going on. You were, you were going. You were going on. <laughs> you, know, you, you were saying. I was banging on about <laughs> my jerks. So, so in those, um, as you release the tension, that final release of tension, you get that kind of jerk, and sometimes you feel like you're falling off a pavement or something. Oh, I do that one all the time. Yeah, yeah I do too. Where, where you just your body just jilts yeah. like that. Yeah. I used to. I used to. I tried this joke a million times. A million times. It never worked. I heard that when you do that, when you're just lying there and you get a shiver. There's an old wives' tale that someone had just walked over your grave. Have you ever heard this? <laughs> There's an old wives' tale that wherever you're going to get buried, someone has walked over your grave. And like, because I, I used to, my mummy said, "Oh, someone just walked over your grave like that." Yeah. Right? And I used to go, "Does that mean that people with epilepsy are getting buried in Leicester Square?" <laughs> <laughs> never, it never worked. Yeah, no, I get it. It's too, but... too, too long a walk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Too, you know when you're dreaming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that do, I, that happens to me. That happens to me a lot. Like sometimes that happens to me more than others. I don't know if that means I'm really like have a lot of tension. Like you're saying, your 
body's releasing all the tension or something. But. You're almost asleep, and then you feel like you just rolled off the bed. You go, yeah, oh, yeah, like, yeah. And then if, if someone's in bed with you, they're like, yeah, all right. I'm like, don't act like you've never done that before. Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that was a dream-based thing. I thought that was just your body well, having a spasm. Well, no, he's saying, I don't know. I think, correct me if you're wrong, it's the beginning yeah. of sleep. Yeah. So this is in the uh, gym's dozy stage. Mm. So it's, it's, it's called light sleep. It's phase one. So My dozy stages. stage, 22 to 35. <laughs> <laughs> Hit, no, yeah. So uh, that's the light sleep. And then you go to uh, phase two, which is um, a bit deeper. And in phase two, you're just starting to get relaxed. You are um, starting to to rebuild some parts of your body. You're starting to just get really rested. And that's the and bit then, where your wife wants to have a chat about something that happened that day. <laughs> yeah, I know fair. that bit. <laughs> but that's the sleepy phase. Yeah. And then there's a phase, phase three is deep sleep. And that's when you're completely out for the count. And you're doing things like secreting growth hormone. You, you know, you're just making sure that your body is getting recharged. It's like plugging your phone in and getting recharged. And then at the end of deep sleep, phase three, you go into REM sleep, into rapid eye movement, which is a very, very light sleep. And it's very similar to waking consciousness. And that's why we often wake up from a dream because we drift back up through REM sleep. We wake up and then we go back light sleep, deep sleep, deeper sleep, REM oh, sleep. Oh, I always thought REM was the deepest sleep. Yeah, because no. they got your REM cycle. Yeah. Ah, oh, but that makes sense. That's yeah, why. It makes, yeah, that yeah. definitely makes so sense. So REM's not the deepest. Mm -mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I love it when you see the cats have it. Their eyes are shuddering, and you're like, "Oh, you're off to sleep, having a good dream." <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. So, um, buh, 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 where are we at? Nightmares? Oh, nightmares. So we did talk a little bit about nightmares, but like, so and why we had them. You did say that i don't know if you want to speak that more but also i asked jim if children have more nightmares than adults and he said no but they do go on about them <laughs> <laughs> but he says it's a reinforced fearful fe feeling of guilt things you're afraid of darwinish way but you, you kind of went over them already but maybe if you want to talk about that night terrors together maybe so. yeah so so nightmares are those really um, powerful emotions jim mentioned something uh really interesting about um, your dad talking about childhood dreams. And uh, is a, <clears throat> so I did um, a book, The Top 100 Dreams that Forrest mentioned. And it's the 100 most common dreams from around the world. And the 17th most common dream from around the world is children in jeopardy. Mm. And that's your, you know, your children are in some sort of danger and you're trying to save them. So because we create the dream, everything in the dream represents something in our waking life. And we use children not to represent our real children, but we use children to represent something that is really close to our heart, something that we are trying to develop and trying to nurture. I'm quite, so I'm quite awkward. close to my son. <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 he represents my car. <laughs> <laughs> Which car? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> So, so your son would represent uh, some creative project that you're working on mm -hmm. and you feel that you may be neglecting or you feel that you need to develop and nurture more or you feel it's, in, it's threatened somehow. So that's what you're telling yourself in the dream. Right. And so and so, do people without children have these, these dreams as well? Because I only started having it once my son was born. Yeah, so it becomes more intense when your son is born because, because dreams are this processing of images but we use the images symbolically to represent other things. So you dream that you want to protect your son, but then your son becomes that symbol of your creative process. It's something where you have conceived an idea, you've had a seed of an idea, you've brought it to life and you're trying to nurture it and develop it into something that can stand on its own two feet. So that's how you symbolize it. Now, when we when we when children watch movies and we say, no, no, don't watch that, it'll give you nightmares, is that a real thing? No, because the, um, a movie is usually something quite abstracted. You watch it on a screen, and even though you're watching it in some immersive experience, like in a big IMAX theater, you still know it's kind of a screen. Uh, if you're using an immersive video game, particularly a, a, a VR headset, virtual reality or augmented reality, then that can have a far more emotional effect on a child. To that point, though, wouldn't it be the exposure of those images, whether they're graphic or a you know a monster or something like that, that now can be part of your dreams or nightmares that that would make it more likely that they're able to have bad dreams or something like that? 
because the child isn't experiencing it firsthand, Kelly, it's still that kind of abstracted thing. So it might use that image from there. So, uh -huh. um, you know, it might use something from the Lion King mm -hmm. saying, oh, that's, uh, you know, that's that symbolizes pride. You know, lions are all about pride or something from Frozen or anything like that. It represents that quality. It's the thing we we're talking about before that in real life, the thing is the what, but in the dream, what you, the image you produce is the why. Why is this thing important? Why is it meaningful? Yeah, because I watched Child's Play when I was five and I had nightmares about Chucky every day for three years. But it must have, I mean, obviously it was representing something else, but that was yeah, a bad I, move. I tell you what my <laughs> one was. I watched The Dark Crystal, mm -hmm. right? And you know how the Skeksis are like the, the villains in it, those mm -hmm. things with like bird-like faces. They look like uh, vultures, vultures type of yeah. thing. Um, they were the ones who were meant to be scary. I wasn't scared by them in the slightest. I was scared by the gilflings, who were the good ones, yeah. who had the little faces and they used to go, when yeah. they were scared, right? <laughs> and the, the gilflings scared the shit out of me, but I was too embarrassed to tell my brothers and my parents <laughs> that it was you the gilflings. The <laughs> so I used to go, oh, the Skeksis, the Skeksis, and the Skeksis didn't bother me to the, to the, to the extent that my brother would go, oh, I miss Skeksis, to try and upset me, and I'd act scared like, oh, because I didn't want him to find out my shameful secret, which is, I'm afraid of gilflings. Now he knows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he knows now. I think I've owned uh, up to him about this. <laughs> so you came clean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My, uh, uh, the, even now they brought out the Dark Crystal again on Netflix, and I thought oh, I'm old enough now, and I put it on for about ten minutes. Oh, get away from me, gilflings! <laughs> <laughs> um, wait. So are night terrors related to nightmares, or is that something different? Yeah. So going back to children's dreams. Oh, so, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So children um, dream a lot. So um, it depends on the child's age, but around about half of a child's sleep is is dreaming. Um, a newborn baby is all dreams. Mm. And the reason for that is we are updating our sense of self. And when you're newly born, just everything is new. Like their dreams must be ah. simple as fuck. Because I remember when my son um, discovered his hands. Yeah, yeah, but they're they're like your dreams, which is all boobs. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's all <laughs> Well, my, my son used to do a thing when he was a baby, which I used to look at him like, you idiot, right? When he was like a little baby, he used to pull his own hair and be screaming because he thought someone was pulling his hair. He didn't understand it was him doing it. He was just there going, ah, stop pulling my hair. Then like, after he started discovering his hand, he was like, ah, oh, why don't you trust that thing again? <laughs> you know, I know that's off topic, but that used to make me laugh. Um, so, so yeah, you reckon baby dreams. So what do you think baby dreams are? Kelly says boobs. I say, I say it's, uh, oh, imagine sitting upright. Ooh, what were the... <laughs> That'd be all right. I would say vaginas. Ooh. Yeah, or uterus. Yeah, I, I, yeah, no, yeah, I imagine there's a lot of dreams I'm stuck in a cave. <laughs> like a lot of their dreams are like 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 a like a Taiwanese soccer team. Yeah. Or instead, <laughs> or instead, you know what it is? It's, <laughs> instead of don't go to the uh, the light, the light, it's like go to the light, go to the light. It's the opposite. It's the opposite of when you die. Mm. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. We're speculating. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing about night terror, so there's a thing called sleep paralysis, which adults experience, which is when you, you wake up, but you feel you can't move your body. But that's different from a night terror. So night terrors are usually experienced by children. And, and as you uh, grow as a child, your brain is still very, very plastic, and it's still developing, and it's, it's moving around a lot, and the chemistry is changing. So all the usual mechanisms that we use as adults to have these 90 minute cycles and sleep properly and so on um, that's still growing so it's not quite finished yet and that's why children sleepwalk a lot but the reason they have night terrors is that they become awake or they appear awake it's kind of like sleepwalking they're still asleep so your child will just like sit boat upright in the bed and might start screaming and you obviously you get very upset and think the child is really upset but the reality is the, the child never usually has any memory of that. Just, you know, the, something happened in their sleep and it wasn't a big deal. Sleep paralysis is where your mind wakes up before your body. So we were saying before with the hypnic jerks that you relax all your muscles. And sometimes if you're really, really fatigued and your body's really tired, your mind will wake up, but your body is still in that sleeping state and it feels like you're paralyzed. Yeah. And then you feel really anxious, so your chest constricts uh, and because you, your breathing is really shallow. So it can feel like someone's sitting on your chest or hugging you from behind. Oh, so it's not and, ghosts. Yes. <laughs> I've been telling everybody it was ghosts that are holding me down when I wake up. Uh, yeah, I was never there. 
<laughs> so sounds fun. I, I I got two questions here, two part of which I, I know I know we didn't talk, and I, I don't know if this is your expertise, but um, okay. So sleepwalking is is you you that's a dream. So in sleepwalking, so what happens? So we're talking about um, why you don't remember your dreams, and another reason is that when you go to sleep, as that re relaxation your brainstem secretes a substance called glycine uh, into your muscles, which effectively paralyzes them so you don't thrash around in your sleep. So if that isn't working as well as it should, then you'll start to act out your dreams. So people talk quite a lot in their dreams. Uh, they I, I talk constantly. People can have conversations with me. My wife, yeah. talk, my wife chats to me in my sleep, and she gets information and everything. But I, 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 I gets information. Yeah, yeah. If she wants to know yeah. something, like, who's Sarah? No, no, she's no, no. She, she. There's no Sarah, honey. Um, she, she talks to me constantly in my in my sleep, and I, I am real chatty in my sleep, and like she's recorded me, and it's quite coherent, and uh, it's, sometimes it's gibberish, but the words you can hear them very clearly. Is that dreaming? And why can she have a conversation? Is she in my dream while that's happening? <laughs> What's happening there, Jim, is because that the dreaming state, the REM state, is very close to to waking. There's remember we're talking about um, the Korean thing, the hypnagogia. Yeah, yeah. So the hypnagogic state is you are kind of floating between waking and dreaming. It's very similar to lucid dreaming, and so in that state, you both have waking and dreaming consciousness. So you're dreaming and you're creating dream imagery but we often pick up on sound that's why sounds wake us up it's that alert thing so you pick up on a sound and and you weave it into your dream so if you say like a fire engine goes past or uh, a bell goes off so the classic one is the alarm clock going off you hear a bell going past and you think oh the house is on fire and there's a fire engine going past in your dream so we weave other information sensory information from around us into our dreams so if your wife's saying stuff to you you'll start replying to them. Mm. Now, sleepwalking. Here's one. My brother is, the, is I know Mike Babiglia did a thing, was it, on, on sleepwalking? Yeah, he did a whole like, comedy special. Yeah, like he has yeah. to time. I, I never saw it, but I know it's about. He has to tie himself down in hotel beds and stuff like that because when he's in Jeez. a different, because in case he walks out or on a balcony or oh, something yeah, like that. Okay. You know? um, my brother is sleepwalk maybe five times in my childhood. He used to sleepwalk so awesome. Like he used to put, he used to like go out his bedroom window and it, like he's, he, he snuck out a few times when he was a kid. And then when he was sleepwalking, he figured out that if he put his doona over the ledge, it wouldn't hurt his arms as much or the ledge of the window. So he put that out. Oh, so within his sleepwalking, he learned how to. Yeah, he, he, did, he was smarter. He was smarter <laughs> asleep, right? And, <laughs> and, and, he, and he put a duvet over the ledge of the thing and he climbed out the window and then he walked out and then he went in the garage and slept in, in the front seat of the car. This was asleep, just in the garage, just sleeping out there. Another time, I, I was doing uh, coming back from a shift. Was this? Is this is Scott. Scott, yeah. I yeah, was yeah. coming back from a shift from McDonald's at twelve o'clock, as my parents made me do at fourteen years of age, <laughs> after working down the fucking coal mine for the rest of the <laughs> fucking day. I was I was working with vats of oil at fourteen, so I could have five dollars an hour, so you people could give me a good work ethic. Well, I proved you wrong. <laughs> anyway, so I I, I, I came home in me greased up McDonald's outfit. And Scott had already been asleep. And he came out like a feral animal into the backyard, just looking at me. He's just in his underwear. And he's just staring at me like in the bushes, like he saw <laughs> like that. And then like he saw me and then he scurried back into the house and then he ran down the hallway and then he got into the bathtub and he's sitting in the bathtub. He's got himself naked now. He's sitting in the bathtub, washing himself like with make-believe water, right? And I'm having, I'm having a chat with him. And I went, all right, good night, mate. Right? And then another time he had this friend called Tim. He woke up. Me and Dad were watching the World Cup at rugby. So it was like midnight or one o'clock in the morning. Scott wasn't interested. It was like one o'clock in the morning because we were watching it in England. And Scott walks out and goes, hey, everyone. And we're like, hey, Scott. He goes, yeah, Tim's dead. <laughs> we went, so casually and, and we went oh that's no good he goes ah oh, what are you gonna do and then he goes back into his room and goes to sleep <laughs> oh, he was a great sleepwalker it was very interesting i've sleptwalk a little bit where i get up and i go and sit on a chair in the other side of the room and that's it hmm. and then I, and it's gl what's the thing gliss gliss glycine glitching or? glitching it's when your brain glycine. glitches huh sorry glycine g-l-y-c-i-n so if if you were if that was something your body wasn't producing, is it something you can take so you don't sleepwalk? Because it'd be dangerous, right? 
Yeah, so I, I'm not a medical doctor. Yeah, we're so, talking about sleepwalking, I, I guess. But. Yeah, so I'm not to advise on that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Bananas. I'd be, getting, I'd be getting into injecting bleep into your bottom territory. Uh, <laughs> get rid of the car. Right, you know what? Let's get back to the dream. So let's get back Sorry, to the dream. Sorry, I thought that was a dream. Here we no, go. It, I, got no, one, it, no, it is. Yeah. I got one more dream question. Do people, are people in a coma, are they dreaming? It, it depends, Jim. So, again, it's that, that spectrum of how much of – how much consciousness they have. So uh, some people do report very, very vivid dreaming episodes on waking from a coma, uh, and, and other people don't. So it depends what parts of their brain are not functioning in the coma. My mother in the last week of her life was basically um, not in a coma, but she wasn't waking up. You know, she, her kidneys were shutting down and she was – coming towards the end and she didn't wake up for about five days or something towards the end they had her on drugs right uh they had her on morphine and yeah. everything like that and she was just she was just waiting for her, her organs to stop basically and um I, was she dreaming would have that been a dreaming thing her brain was still lucid i imagine yeah um, it, she might have been jim mm. um I, i've done a lot of work with alzheimer's patients uh and if they dream or not because Again, it comes back to the memory thing. It's just very, very interesting that they will recall lots of memories from quite long ago, but not recently. So, so your mother may have been dreaming. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, so lucid dreams, Jim says, is when you control the narrative in the dream. Yeah, so that, that was pretty close, Jim. But you can't control the dream, but you can make choices in it. So people think they will learn how to lucid dream because they won't get chased by various things from the dark crystal because they can control it. It was the Skeksis, I tells you. <laughs> <laughs> didn't, I didn't like to say, Jim. I don't want to bring that up again. But, but in that, um, you can make choices in the dream. So in, in lucid dreaming, you become aware that you're dreaming. And usually what happens when you become aware that you're dreaming is that you just wake up. And... People make a, a real big deal about of lucid dreaming, that they say that you have to have certain spiritual beliefs, so you have to follow a certain diet or go and live in a, a dojo or an ashram for a few months. But the reality is we all lucid dream at least twice a night naturally, and we can use that to, to build on that. So the hypnagogic thing, when you're falling asleep, there's a, that moment when that uncommanded image flashes into your brain. That's the very moment you're falling asleep. And you have the opportunity at that point to play around with that image, to think, oh, I've made this image that I wasn't expecting. And the other part of it is in the morning, the waking phase. It's called the hypnopompic phase. And in that, when you start to wake from a dream, you still have some dream imagery in your mind. What you can do is play around with that image. So that's the key thing in learning how to lucid dream is playing around with an image and making choices with it. So say that you're dreaming of a tree, mm. you can make the tree bigger or smaller. Or give it tits. Make... Yes. <laughs> well, I, again, I did like to say, Jim, I was going to use a your example, but I thought I'd go for a tree. <laughs> ah, your tit gave me a splinter. <laughs> <laughs> the worst. And, uh, and, and when they say, when you say daydream, because like when someone says, oh, oh, I was off with the fairies, uh, is that a real thing because you're awake or is that just um, letting your mind wander? So in daydreaming, well, it's in, in daydreaming, it's usually quite a conscious process. You're letting your mind wander, but you're connecting things consciously uh, and usually quite logically. But in a nighttime dream, you are using a different type of logic and it's far more about the connection. So in the, the daytime, in daydreaming, uh, you're using what's known as Aristotelian logic. It's all cause and effect. But in the dream, it's non-Aristotelian. There's no cause and effect. They're just making all these connections at a much deeper level. Because mm. no one ever day nightmares, do they? Yeah. Wow. You never see someone just sitting there in their chair, just looking off in the distance. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, I was off with the devils. Ah. Ooh. Yeah, Ooh, that was you tough. People like that, people who have hallucinations, and, and certainly people who have some mental health issues, who are perhaps schizophrenic. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um. Does does do yeah. drink like does weed help your dreams? Because I find out I have like different dreams 
on weed. I definitely have different dreams on mushrooms. And then there's like, there was a, a anti-smoking drug, which a few of my friends took that they said they had some, called Chantix, who people said they had crazy ass dreams. And I think that's even in the warning on the, on the thing. Ambient is like a weird, like everyone reports stuff like that. Yeah, I'm sure, well, I don't know. So so is that is that a real thing or, or is it just? That's, that, that's definitely a real thing. So anything that alters your natural brain chemistry will affect your dreaming. So, so things like um, so sleeping pills, um, things like Ambien, uh, shrooms. Uh, there's a thing called galamantine, which people try and use to do lucid dreaming, but you usually end up having really bad trips with it. So all those things altering your brain chemistry will give you different types of dreams. And, and the worst ones are uh, using nicotine patches when you're trying to give up smoking, because smoking suppresses dreaming activity. So it reduces oxygen flow to the brain and nicotine suppresses dreaming activity. So when you quit cigarettes, then you start to dream more. And then because you get the buzz from the nicotine patch slowly feeding in, it really amps up your dreams. So you have these crazy nicotine nightmares. Wow. Which really oh. That's really interesting. Okay. Oh, so you get more nightmares. Um, is it, okay, so you said uh, these drugs can suppress your dreams. They can, well, nicotine can suppress them. Smoking can suppress them. Nicotine can make them go into a nightmare. Is there, is, is there anything detrimental to having bad dreams to your psyche or to your well-being? That's a, that's a fabulous question. I mean, all your questions have been fabulous. But I'm that's very a, good, the, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Best question, that's good. I'm the, I'm the new Parkinson. <laughs> <laughs> that's a really great question because people often think that dreams are bad and they say, oh, can you stop me dreaming and, and all these things. It, it, the, the function of the dream is to update your sense of self. And so all you're doing in the dream is understanding who you are, who you've been, but most importantly, who you can become. So usually what happens in a dream, when you're dreaming of um, being guilty about something, then it's not because you have done something bad to someone else. It's not. It's because you've betrayed yourself in some way. You've let yourself down. So when you have the, the dream of um, not being prepared for a test or taking a test or being unprepared for an exam gym that you're talking about before your stand-up gig, the... The way that I work with dreams, I work with language. So I don't do the pointy hat, swirly cape stuff, and I don't do lots of white lab coat and clipboard stuff. The way we work with dreams is to work with language. And the reason for that is that the main way that we express our emotions in waking life is through metaphors and idioms. So we do it through linguistic images, like banging my head off a brick wall. I've got a mountain to climb. It's an uphill struggle, floods of tears. So that's why we use imagery in dreams. We use the same type of imagery in, in waking life. So when you dream that you are unprepared for an exam, then the language around that, so exams are about being judged, examining, uh, being critical, uh, allowing other people to judge you. But what you're actually doing in the dream is you're judging yourself too harshly. You're being far too self-critical because in your stand-up, you want it to be as good as it can be, to be really perfect. So you're constantly re-examining it and being critical of yourself and thinking, oh, I could have done that a bit better or I should have done that or I should have waited a beat for that response. So that's what you do in the unprepared for the exam, for the test stream. You're constantly examining your performance and judging it against perfection. Oh, so they really are metaphors, your dreams. They so, really are things well, that... So, okay, that's taking it. What about being naked in public? Naked in public. So again, just working with the what's and the why's. So why... Why do our clothes, Why? Do, what do our clothes represent? So the why of clothes is, apart from keeping us warm, is how we present our self-image to other people. And we, we choose that, we choose the persona, the self-image that we show to other people in waking life. If we're not wearing any clothes in the dream, then we feel vulnerable and exposed. We feel that other people can see the real us that we might not want them to see, apart from in Jim's school bus dream where he's happily waving his bully around for I'm, not, I'm not happily i just think I, I just think i have the confidence to play it off <laughs> it is yeah. what I'm it is i'm not happy i wish i wore pants <laughs> let's make the best of a bad situation that's how i'm looking at it uh, if, in an ideal world i'll be wearing pants uh, yeah pants are full um yeah. and then so, so in, oh, sorry so in that dream so in that dream there's something where you feel a bit vulnerable so it might have been at school 
where you felt that, again, you're being judged in some way or you're going into a new class or you're learning a new subject. There's also the, the symbol of trousers, which are usually the symbol of, of grown up men and malehood. So you maybe felt that you weren't grown up enough. Yeah, yeah no, because that, that, that is true. That was that was sort of the year, and I'm, I'm not saying this to be crude, sort of the year when all the other boys had pubes and I was like a year younger than everybody else and I just didn't quite have pubes. And I had that one year where in gym class, I was like, I don't want to take my pants off. And every, no. everyone with a hairy dick was just like, fucking look, look at my hairy <laughs> dick. They were walking around naked. And then there was me and another couple of blokes who were like, oh, it's going to get changed over here. Yeah. <laughs> then 20 years later, they want to shave it. Not even, probably. 15. Um, Manscaped. Yeah. I don't think they're our sponsor anymore. Yeah, I still like the product. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, Free plug. Jack was shaking his head up and down. I don't know. Anything. Losing teeth? I didn't oh. even, that's like a common dream. Do you have yeah, that? Yeah, I have the losing teeth. I'm writing out of my head. Oh, no, the losing teeth, I've heard, is something to do with like... worrying about money. Is that correct? I've heard this somewhere. No. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the so, dream where you don't have any money. Yeah, yeah, that one, where you're, you, your pockets go inside out. And you're like, I've got no pants on. <laughs> <laughs> so what teeth symbolize are power and confidence. So we tend to show our teeth in two uh, main occasions. That waking up. One is doing smiling. And that is, so we show our teeth, we're happy, we're confident. And the other one is where we're kind of snarling and asserting ourselves and being angry. So teeth symbolize power and confidence. So if your teeth are falling out, then there's some situation in your waking life where you feel you're losing your power and your confidence. And Jack has this nightmare <laughs> yeah. on the on the on the regular. You, you can't you can't uh, see Jack. Jack is is you can only hear him. He's in the but he you you just described him. Yeah, so. that's crushing. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was just worried about losing teeth in real life. Yeah. <laughs> There's a real fear as yeah, well. He's, <laughs> he's not powerful or confident. <laughs> okay, I do have another recurring and, dream, and again, <laughs> which is I. There's a red light coming up, and I can't slow down because the brakes don't work, and I run through the red light. And oh, no, that's a positive thing. That means <laughs> you're going to come into wealth. <laughs> that's actually the eighth most common dream, Jack. <laughs> wow. I'm someone normal. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. a lot of fuck-ups so, in this planet. <laughs> and what, what vehicles represent, Jack, is uh, you're trying to get somewhere in, in your career or with an idea or a project. Mm. Uh, so it's all about your personal drive and ambition. So sometimes in Jack's dream, he can't get out of the driveway. <laughs> <laughs> the parking brake won't come off. <laughs> He's sitting in the passenger seat going, this can't be right. <laughs> Still runs the red light. <laughs> Sorry, I cut you off. Sorry, it was worth it. Yeah, yeah, it was. yeah it's cool. So in that dream, you think um, sometimes it's about taking a more measured approach to where you're going rather than feeling that you're trying to put the brakes on suddenly. Things have got a bit out of control, uh, perhaps with someone who you work closely with. You know, Ooh, so. I, I, uh, well, I don't want to go through all these, because I'm sure in your book, the top 100 dreams, the dreams that we all have and what they really mean. Is, is, the, that, is but... the pissing on your leg and thinking you're standing in front of the toilet, that's a real thing, right? <laughs> Yeah, it is. Um, yeah. It's actually the third most common dream. Yeah. Not doing uh, really? pissing on your leg, but that's um, quite idiosyncratic. But not being able to find a toilet, and again, working with language, we have this phrase, needing the mm. toilet. Oh. And if you can't find a toilet, it suggests that in your waking life, you spend all your time looking after the needs of other people. That's me. Sometimes That's me. attending to your own needs. No, I do that one a lot. But that is something I, uh, mm. I have to get the book. I have to get the book. Like I'm definitely book. getting the book. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> so th this kind of leads me into the thing we talk about recurring dreams. And I didn't ask this, but like, why do different people have similar dream themes. Like if they, they, we didn't even talk about our dreams for us, but everyone's having that same dream. Like, how does that happen? Mm -hmm. Well, because if everything's so, so a metaphor. Things, yeah. So the, the, the two things there for us. So one is um, recurring dreams. So we, we, we touched on this a little bit in the nightmare uh, we were talking about is you're creating a dream and you're processing information and you're sending yourself uh, a message in the form of images to do something within waking life. And if you don't take action, on that dream because a dream is just a dream until you put it into action if you don't take action on that dream you will keep sending yourself that message until you do take action i had this uh, client a while ago who was a, an 82 year old man and he'd been having a recurring dream three nights a week for 65 years mm -hmm. uh, and it was about some uh, unfortunate incident in puberty and he was trying to resolve this for 65 years and once we worked through the dream you never had the dream again. So that's what a recurring dream does. So the what's reason it, that we, oh, sorry, go on. 
the reason that we have common dream themes is that we're all human beings and we have quite similar psychologies. So we dream, as dream, Jim was saying, we dream metaphorically, we dream linguistically. So if we are trying to achieve a higher level in waking life, we dream of going up a slope. If we dream uh, of encountering some emotional barrier, uh, in dreams, emotions are symbolized by water. So we dream of to cross a river or get across a sea or we're trying to navigate a boat somehow. Mm -hmm. So we all tend, uh, that's why the top 100 dreams is currently in 14 languages. These patterns are universal throughout the world yeah. that because of human physiology and the human landscape, we all have dreamer, similar dream patterns. I, I tell you, what, I'm fascinated by this. I, I actually will will buy the book. I know uh, I yeah, say me too. I, really I, I, I want to wake up in the morning and have a look. And go, what was that all about? Yeah. Can, I know you already listed a couple of them. Can you get? Can you give us the top five dreams? And I want to I want to tick off all the people in the room who have had these top five dreams. I think you've mentioned two of them already. Yeah. So we've done. Um, yeah, we've done five of them actually. We have. Um, so is it yeah. the, the what, pants? What's okay. number one? Number one. So number one is being chased. Being chased. Yeah, I had yeah. that. I used to have a cliche one where it was a werewolf and then I would hide in a wardrobe and I would I would peer through the crack and him and another werewolf would just be like snarling, just going, where is he? I can smell him. Like that, <laughs> wow. right? And that was terrifying, right? So I've had that one. Yeah, number one, being chased. Number two is... Teeth problem, so losing yeah. teeth. Jack's got that all day. I've Jack's that. got that all day. I've yeah, but, Jack, but, but Forrest, you you've got power and confidence, confidence, confidence yeah. coming out the wazoo. It gives me the lack of confidence. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a supporter. Tough love. Yeah, Tough, yeah. love. <laughs> Tough love. Number three is toilet troubles, not being able to find a toilet. Okay, I've, yeah, never, I've never had that. I've never had that one. You've never had the one where you think you're standing in front of a toilet and you're not, and you're like, no. oh, I'm not I mean, I wake up like five or six times a night to pee and I just go to the bathroom. I, have, I, have, I, 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 only, I only have it about once every two years, but I, have, I don't, I've, I don't I've, recall I've, that I've, at least. I've, I've, I've had it at least at least 15 times it, in life. It means you care life. about others and I have it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> every night. Yeah. Okay. Number four is naked in public. Naked mm -hmm. in public, yeah, we've yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. got that one. I've had that one, yeah. And number five is unprepared for an, an exam. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's, I've had, I've here we go. Yeah, I'm going to throw you a curveball because you've got 100 in your book. What's number 98? Number 98 is traveling to the future. Oh, oh man, I never have that one. That one sounds cool. <laughs> that's 98. It's not that common. 76. <laughs> 76. Oh, that's, you're, you're testing me now, Jim. So 76 is a leaking roof. Oh, wow. We don't know if he's right or wrong. He could just, <laughs> <laughs> I could just be making him a toy. I'm buy getting the book. We'll buy the book and we'll yeah, call I'll, Ian back. What the I'll, fuck I'll, like? I'll come back and go, Ian's full of shit. There's <laughs> bloody, there's no bloody I, leaking I, roof. I'll tell you, this is a dream I had record. I, 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 I kind of run out of time, but I just, I, this is, there's a couple things I want to ask you that we've, oh, there you go. He's oh, proving he's it. The book. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking it. good. Number 76. <laughs> wow. I, after my mom died, my mom died about a year and a half ago. And after she died, I kept having dreams that she hadn't died, but she was about to die again. And I had to like help her die again. Ah, uh, number 48. <laughs> Classic. It was not a fun. So yeah, that's, that's the 20th most common dream. So you're quite close, Jim. Really? So again, for us, when we dream, we create all the characters in the dream. And what's the one quality that you associate with your mother for us? Um, just like kindness, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So we use the characters in the dream to characterize characteristics that we have the potential to develop in waking life. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, he doesn't. So, yeah. so, so he, didn't pick you, up, he didn't pick up that trait from his mother. Nah, sometimes, some days. <laughs> So, so when you have that, so what you do um, when a loved one passes away is that you use them to represent those qualities that you loved in the most, that you associate most with them. Yeah. And, and you have the potential to use that quality. So even though they are no longer here physically, you still carry that quality inside you and they kind of live on inside you because of yeah. that. That's way better than her just watching her die. I was like, ugh, this is terrible. But okay. Um, Okay, I just want to go through these kind. Of, I know we I just want to see what the right answer was because we're getting we got to kind of wrap up here. But uh, um, false awakenings. Jim said when you pee in your sleep, you thought you walked out toilet, you were dreaming. That was kind of. But what is a false awakening? If we can, a false awakening is when you um you think that you've woken up in your dream and you kind of get up mm. and, and oh, that, shower and dress and make breakfast. That's the worst. Because you start. Oh, wait, wait, and then yeah. you're still you didn't you're still dreaming then. 
yeah, and you're still dreaming. Yeah. Um, and then you, uh, you think, yeah, all set out the door where you have to go. And then you wake up and think, oh my, I've, I've done all this already. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I think I have uh, that a lot. There's nothing worse than a dream where you have to convince yourself that didn't happen. Yes. It's okay. It didn't happen. I have those ones where I wake up. Like, it doesn't feel dreamy. It just feels like I went into work and I was fired. And then everyone said yeah, I was doing it. Then... That, that seems to be a lot of my dreams lately. They're really, really mundane things that, like, could possibly happen at work. Like, this conversation that happened. And then I, for the rest of the day, I'm like, do I need to apologize? To like, do, oh, did I, I fuck I, up? Did I not turn this in? I had one this morning. This one's fucking bananas. I had one this morning. I woke up. The whole world hasn't been able to work for like 10 months and we all have to wear masks everywhere we go. <laughs> mm. wow, wow, what a nightmare. Crazy. <laughs> Keep that one yourself. Um, okay, and, and my girlfriend asked us one, so I, I need to know the answer So because she asked. Is that as big us. as it gets? Why is Forrest such an asshole? <laughs> no, no. I, I asked it at the end. Like, why Your mother are... was so kind. Why are you such a dickhead? <laughs> <laughs> why are certain sensations muted in dreams? Like when you're running, but you... Can't, aren't running fat like it feels like you're stuck in mud or something like that or you hit something and you don't you think you're hitting it hard but you don't hit it hard it's like muted is that you know what i'm talking about yeah so again you just have to work with it symbolically for it so if your feet are stuck in mud your feet and your legs are how you make progress self-motivated motivated progress in waking life it's how you take a step so usually there's something uh, in waking life in, for your girlfriend where she's trying to commit to something. Mm -hmm. Not trying to push you here at all for us. Uh -oh. but she's trying to commit to something where she's going to take a step. Mm -hmm. And if you're stuck in mud, the, the first step is always the hardest one. And once you get some momentum and get something moving. So it's probably something she's got an idea to do. And usually in the dream, you're kind of leaning forward. And because your head is how you think about things, how you theorize them, it's like the idea is there in your head and you're moving ahead conceptually with it, but you actually need to say, take some practical action. And just very briefly, um, the 21st most common dream is often a false awakening one, and it's the major cause of upper arm bruising in men. And that's the having an affair dream, that your partner dreams that you're having an affair. Oh, and God. Wake up the one where the I, woman wakes up and went, you cheated on me in, my, in the sleep and you're in trouble for the whole morning? <laughs> I, I've never dated a woman who doesn't have that one. That's one that one's like this. That's that's female number one. <laughs> yeah. You're in and trouble for treating them. Not even cheating. Just troubling. But you uh, you were in my dream and you were awful to me. <laughs> and you're like, oh, I'm sorry about that. Like, well, what did I do? I don't want to talk about it. And you're like, get the fuck oh, out I've, of here. I've definitely had those dreams. I've never held it against somebody, though. But no, but they find it. It's not that they hold it against you. They're a little curt with you for about 40 minutes after oh, waking up. Yeah, no, we're, I, don't, we're, I don't blame anybody for it. But I do, I find that in my dreams, I rarely ever have characters that I haven't met or like dream, dream men or something like that. It's always my friends or family. And oftentimes it's more nightmarish where they're trying to kill me in a way that's like tortuous. <laughs> Like they're like chopping me into pieces and stuff like that. What what's wrong with my brain? <laughs> uh, there's, there's absolutely nothing. It's perfectly perfectly healthy. So what's happening in that dream, Kelly? Again, just the, the way that dreams are working, because you're creating the dream. Then when you are uh, when you feel other people are um, trying to torture you or kill you, then you feel that you have to be accepted by other people. So you try and behave in a way that's acceptable to other people. Uh, and as you do that, one of the things that happens in that, you actually start um, shutting down parts of your own talent and your own creativity. So when people dream of being guilty of murder, they are actually feeling guilty about trying to kill off some part of themselves. Oh, it's usually some creative talent in order to be accepted by their peer group or the social group. So it's nothing to do with anything bad. It's you saying to yourself, here's something that you need to keep alive and you need to nurture uh, and don't care what other people think about you. You just need to be Kelly. Wow. This is one for the people who are listening at home who, who might be wondering this question after we, we talked about it. Um, after you get off the medication or you stop uh, using nicotine, do your dreams go back to normal? Yeah. So the, you start to have this um, uh, quite powerful phenomenon called REM rebound that you start to have really, really intense and vivid dreams. And the same thing happens if you have any form of sleep deprivation, voluntary or involuntary, that the first type of sleep you will have as soon as you fall asleep will be all dreaming, it will be all REM sleep. 
So I, I've done some work with some um, of the um, Navy SEALs in the US. And when they do things like um, the, the BUDS course, and they're up for days on end, and they have a the chance of an hour to sleep, that hour of sleep is all REM sleep. And you can see them uh, twitching and moving and their eyes moving. So we have this really powerful thing called REM rebound. Mm. Mm. All right. Well, um, we uh, clearly were interested in this because we talked for a long time with you, and there's a lot more questions we could ask. But if you I'm go, ordering your book as we yeah, speak. <laughs> if you go to Ian, and Wall- I'll be borrowing enough Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> if you go to Ian Wallace Dreams, I N I A N W A L L A C E D R E A M. God damn it. Uh, that that sounded way more confusing yeah. than it was supposed to be. <laughs> It'll be up on the screen. <laughs> Ian Wallace, what were you spelling? I don't know. Yeah, I'm just trying Ian, to... Ian Wallace dreams. <laughs> it's dreams. Dream, dream, <laughs> dreams. Ah, oh, oh, like rep, rapid. He's currently I, having... And he, then an A. He's currently having a dream where he can't read. The f- <laughs> the, it's in 14 different languages, the, ladies and the, gentlemen. If you're in one the, of those countries that have the languages, well done. If you're not, you're butt fuck out of luck. Yeah. <laughs> the, the books are the top 100 dreams. Dreams, the dreams that we all have and what they really mean, and also the complete A to Z dictionary of dreams. Be your own dream expert. Before you go, give us our dinner party fact about dreams. So we had the one earlier that uh, when you dream, you become sexually aroused. Yeah. Mm. But the other one is people often think of the, the brain as some sort of computer, but it's far, far more complex than that. In your brain, so your brain is comprised of nerve cells called neurons. And in your brain, you have 100 billion neurons. Or used to. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe less in some cases. I got I got one neuron just sitting by itself going, where did everyone go? <laughs> Anybody coming back? <laughs> well, that's, that's the most important bit, Jim, is not just the neurons themselves, but how connected they are, the degree of connectivity. And it's estimated that in the brain, there are 10 quadrillion neural connections. So if you have a group of a thousand people, they have the same number of neural connections as there are grains of sand on planet Earth. Oh, oh, oh that's yeah. a good one. I like yeah. that one. That's, that's a lot. That's intense. All right, thank you, Eno. I appreciate you being on the on the podcast. We enjoyed this very much. Well, very thank you. Very, very, very interesting. I hope the people listening enjoyed it. If if you want to get any more information, reach out to Ian, buy his book. Uh, if you're uh, if you're ever at a party. And there's some fucking bore. You're at a dinner party. There's some cunt who won't shut up. And then they go, you know, I never dream. Go, well, I don't know about that. Talk to you next week, America. <laughs>